Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Archbishop Wood High School. It's the site of a Thursday night matchup between Devon Prep and Archbishop Wood, a big-time seating matchup, and a special one this evening because it's a solo matchup in the Catholic League. No other games on the docket. This is where all the eyes are focused, and we'll bring you now inside the broadcast booth. Bob Long, Will Ryan, and Bruce Badgley alongside. Will, let's start with you. When you talk about early Philadelphia Catholic League basketball action, well, these are the games that are going to mean something in early to mid-February when it's time to seed. And then when you're putting yourself in a position to try to go to the Palestra, it's both of these teams' goals and a heck of a lot more teams in the league that not all of them are going to go. And so games like this are important to put you in position. Absolutely. And you said it's a standalone matchup. I'm sure a lot of other teams in the Philadelphia Catholic League will be tuning in to watch this one with the seeding implications. That's what makes the Philadelphia Catholic League so great. Just the fourth league game of the year, and we're already talking seeding. I mean, it's just an awesome league. It's going to be an awesome matchup between Devon Prep, the 3A state champs from last year, Archbishop Wood, 6A state finalists last year. Two really great programs going to be going at it tonight. Bruce, we had the opportunity to call a lot of those state title games last year, and I remember marveling to you about this Devon Prep team that this was a team when they won the state title that was playing with more efficiency and togetherness really than just about anybody at any classification. And, and it's a team that lost Alan Cieslak, a fantastic guard, returned a lot. One guy we won't see today is Jason Holloway. But in talking with the head coach, Jason Fisher, he says, listen, we just want to be back at that point by the time March comes around, right? And these games are important for seeding, but we need to find out who we're going to be for a couple of games without Jason Holloway and who we're going to be come playoff time. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of coaches actually don't mind that situation because uh, kind of the hidden gem here is it helps create depth that you're going to need in the postseason. So uh, from Devin's prep perspective, yeah, they're going to be a man down, but I think, you know, Coach is talking about the fact that he's going to try and make a positive out of negative uh, tonight. And Archbishop Wood, you know, what can you say? Uh, another uh, role or another team on a roll here as we uh, reach to the uh, Philadelphia Catholic League regular season and then start connecting the dots with them for, you know, a state title run. We're going to see both of these teams in the PIAA tournament. It's great to get a look at them right now so we can see literally how they're progressing as the season goes on. You say that, but, well, it's far from a sure thing that we see Archbishop Wood in the, in the uh, PIAA state playoffs, not because this isn't a tremendous team, but because of the depth at that classification. Yeah, absolutely. At the 6A level, you have teams like Father Judge. You have teams like Roman Catholic. Obviously, obviously an Archbishop Wood, a LaSalle, but there's a, you know, a lot of good, good 6A teams out there. And with only two, uh, I guess a maximum of two Philadelphia Catholic League 6A teams moving on to that PAAA state tournament, could be tough, PIAA state tournament, excuse me. Uh, it could be tough for Archbishop Wood. That makes this game just as important because of the, the point system, 10 points, I believe, for a league win. Uh, really important game. Yeah, I mean, this the PIAA District 12 and specifically 6A Catholic League representative. It is statistically the toughest league to actually earn that seed. Look at what happened last year. It was Roman Catholic and Archbishop Wood, the two PCL 6A reps playing in the state title game, yeah. right? So just to give you a sense, in St. Joe's Prep, they're loaded with four stud guards, Tristan Gillouette. You know, these are the important games here. Uh, as we look around the rest of the Catholic League, well, what stood out to you to this point in the year? Uh, so far, I mean, Cardinal O'Hara had a really nice first game against LaSalle College High School, but then Roman Catholic goes to O'Hara, is down at half, and then absolutely kind of has a standout second half, uh, shuts Isaiah Pasha down to zero points in the second half, holds Cardinal O'Hara to four points in that second half. So Roman Catholic opens up the season, you know, taking down Archbishop Woods 77-56 or 77-55, I believe. A dominant win at Holy Family University to open up uh, league play. A lot of teams say Newman Goretti coming into the season, Roman Catholic starting to maybe question that a little bit, saying, hey, it's not going to be a cakewalk for the Saints, you know, to get to the Palestra. I shouldn't say to get to the Palestra, but to, uh, you know, hoist that hubcap. Yeah. Roman Catholic has been the team that's really stood out to me thus far in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Yeah, and, and for the teams that weren't as great last year, teams that struggled in the regular season, a couple stand out. Uh, Bonner Prendergast with those transfers, a tremendous team that has a chance 
that in the right set of circumstances could advance deep in the state tournament. St. Joe's prep as well at the 6A level. Tremendous and much better than they were last year. Father Judge hit 15 threes en route to a loss against Archbishop Ryan. The league is incredibly deep, and there are two teams here tonight that contribute in a big way to that depth. Devon Prep and Archbishop Wood. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back for tip-off here on Bob Long Sports. Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with Franchise, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. Franchise is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above, and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Let's meet the starting lineups. First, the tide of Devon Prep. Lucas Orchard, a veteran leader on this Devon Prep team, can shoot it, can get to the rack. Good in the rebounding aspect, but really just will an overall team player. Yeah, absolutely. First team all Catholic last year as well, so the individual accolades are there along with being a great team player. Ty Mishak introduced second. Zane Conlon, a sophomore getting significant time and Bruce a wide body Conlon. Yeah and I think that's going to be very important tonight for Devin Prep. I think the key to the game is how well Devin Prep's going to match up inside against this Archbishop Wood team. Ben Costello the junior and Shane Doyle the sophomore. The other two in the starting five for Devin Prep. They're dressed in yellow here today. For Archbishop Wood, it's Deuce Maxey introduced first. Gus Salem, a transfer, coming into the state of Pennsylvania for his senior year. He's given Archbishop Wood really nice minutes this year. Josh Reed, a veteran for this team that made the run to the state title last year, as is Carson Howard, the big bodied five, number 22. He'll be Tying up in the middle of the floor and in the lane against Conlon tonight. And then Jaleel Bethea wearing number one this season. A big time recruit, a guy with limitless range and a key for Archbishop Wood's success this year, Will. Yeah, absolutely. And something that I found interesting while prepping for this game, Jaleel Bethea last year when they played Devin Prep, he had six points. It wasn't that long ago where he was a bench piece for Archbishop Wood. He'd get, you know, his threes up, but then he kind of exploded in that state playoffs, uh, you know, ended up having 37 in one game off of 11 threes. 
Um, watch that video on Bob Long Sports YouTube. It's on there. Um, <laughs> But no, and now Jaleel Bethea uh, in non-league play was averaging um, 21 points per game. Uh, had 28 the other night at Cardinal O'Hara. Extremely efficient, I believe. Eight for 11 from the field, perfect from the line. And then to go along with eight rebounds and seven assists. So he's really blossomed into a superstar uh, over the past year or so. Amazing how one game like that can create confidence for a player for an entire season. Archbishop Wood in white, Devin Prep in yellow, and we're underway. Here's Ty Misak, the junior guard. Remember, the tide without Jason Holloway here this evening. There's a wing tray, no good. And Salem will take the ball up for Archbishop Wood. Gus Salem probably had his best game in an Archbishop Wood uniform against O'Hara. Some really big buckets towards the end of the game. Turnover on the first offensive possession for Archbishop Wood. Milan Dean will not play tonight either for Archbishop Wood. So with Holloway out for Devin Prep and Milan Dean out for Archbishop Wood, both teams a little less than 100%, but Devin Prep's depth will be tested. I could argue that Archbishop Wood on paper has more depth well coming into this one. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and the PCL playoff picture doesn't really care who you have and who you don't have. It's the wins and losses, you know, to try to get that home game. Lucas Orchard, dangerous pass. Mishak in the right place after the tip. One minute into this one. And several deliberate offensive possessions. This just the second offensive possession for Devin Prep. And that was nice help defense by Gus Salem there. Devin Prep really, really good at back cutting. And they were there in the paint to, to bump the cutter. Mishak, a deep three. And brought down by Jaleel Bethea. Three Archbishop Wood Vikings in the area on that defensive glass. Pull up, and it's good. Josh it's Reed. Going to be interesting to see how patient Devin Prep works it on offense. I think for Devin Prep to have a shot tonight, I mean, they've got to keep the winning score in the 40s. Well, that's going to be tough against a team like Archbishop Wood. And Devin Prep, a team that can light it up as well. Orchard got into the lane, now looks for help. Zane Conlon brings some shooting as the as a you know pseudo five man. He can he can definitely stretch it out as well. Really nice ball movement there. Wing three is good for Ben Costello, the junior. And it's the extra pass from Lucas Orchard that makes that play. Howard inside, got the feet set. Salem from distance, hits good. And now this game with some pace to it, a little bit more than two minutes in. 5-3, Archbishop Wood. And this number might be off by one or two, but I believe Ty Mishak had 28 points against Reading earlier this season. I mean, these kids can really fill it up. Excellent ball movement inside. Mishak is going to end up with it at the logo. But good two-man basketball between him and Conlon. Now Conlon with another touch. Reed fights through that screen at the top. Mishak spins, an extra step, but the foul came first. It goes against Deuce Maxey. Yeah, and there's that good patience on offense for Devin Prep, working for the good shot. They didn't get the basket, but they got two free throws. And when you have a ball hander like Mishak, you feel really comfortable, you know, being patient with it. <laughs> I hear you whisper there. <laughs> the gym went silent for Mishak's free throw. Uh, so my, my voice went down a little bit. That's right. But Remember, no. we're the only ones that can hear each other in our ear, which is good, by the way. Except for everybody watching along, which we really appreciate, by the way. And we really do. But yeah, Mishak's been a, a starter on this team since his freshman year. I mean, if you feel like he's been around a while, he's, he is a three-year starter, only a junior. Uh, but with to have that experience, really, really good for this Devon Prep team. Dribble drive by Reed all the way to the 10. Do we count that as a dunk? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ball was off his hands, but he definitely got his hand on the rim. We're giving it to him, absolutely. Yeah, that was just great offensive flow there. Got to the lane and went right to the basket aggressively. 
There's a dribble drive, Costello. Officials consistent on that one early. A deep three by Mishak, no good. Jaleel Bethea, physical on the defensive glass. Now Salem, he's feeling it. That one a bit long and strong carom by Conlon. Orchard muscles his way in the lane. Four and, minutes to go. And Devin's prep's offense, you know, really relies on getting that lane penetration, working off two feet and kicking out for the open three. Or, you know, with a Zane Conlin in, with a Lucas Orchard in, once you get into that paint, a back cut, you know, for a layup. Mishak in total control. And to counter their, their cuts, they're switching everything. And it's really, really good defense from Archbishop Wood thus far. Nothing easy. Jaleel Bethea. Too strong, and Howard couldn't finish it. Bethea opened the door behind the hoop, and he's slow to get back into it. And a travel on Mishak. Yeah, Another see, look, timeout on the floor. See, I think that, you know, Devin Prep and being patient on offense, you know, that's going to create impatience for Archbishop Wood. That, you know, they're not going to have the ball, they're going to want to score quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And thus far, we haven't seen them kind of be impatient defensively. They've defended for 30, 40 seconds. A lot of times you see teams, you know, want to defend for 10 to 15 seconds, and then you, you beat them on one of those backdoor cuts. You know, John Mosco and, and his team obviously watched a lot of film, sees the backdoor cuts from Devin Prep, and they're playing that very well. Offensively, they might be a little bit impatient, but defensively, they've been doing a really great job for the first four-plus minutes of this game. And I actually disagree with that a little bit. I mean, if you're talking about that last possession, Bruce, it was it was a transition opportunity mm -hmm. oh, off yeah. of Bethea Steele. He actually had a half step. You could argue contact if you're an Archbishop Wood fan as well. Um, and then Howard trying to finish in one motion. That's something he can do. Well, yeah, I don't want to draw, like, a conclusion just from sure. the one possession, but I think that the more that Devin Prep stays, you know, in that offensive flow and makes our Archbishop Wood play defense, that it will create that impatience yep. as they get to the offensive end of the floor. We can take this chance now to play our favorite game, and that is hey. where you at? Where are you at? It. Let us know where you're watching the game from. You can... Reply in the YouTube comments section. Also, make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube. If you have not, we've eclipsed the 2,000 subscriber mark. We're pumped about that. And uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Bob Long Sports and tweet at us. Who are you? Where are you watching the game from? And let us know why you love Catholic League basketball and high school basketball. Elevator screen here for Jaleel Bethea. The Devin Prep defense was ready for it. It's a play that we've seen over the past couple of years. Uh, I should say over last year, you know, they run that elevator screen for Jaleel Bethea. Obviously, Devin Prep did their scouting work. They switch, switch it right here. Number 22, Ty Mishak just switches up, and a good job by Shane Doyle switching on to the picker. The roll was there a little bit, but Carson Howard tried to go to work by himself. Mishak off the right-handed dribble. Orchard, a deep three, and brought down by Reed. No numbers for Jaleel Bethea. It's one on four, but a grab called against Lucas Orchard. You put two hands on the ball handler, and that's going to be a foul at any level. And with Jaleel's constant aggression, that's what he makes defenders do. Make, you know, give fouls that they don't necessarily want to give. They're not trying to give. It's just a reaction. Maxi thought about the three. He gets to where he needs to, off the glass. Penetration with purpose that time. A little head fake got the defender off balance and one power dribble to get to the spot. You said it, Bob. That was all set up by that pump fake. Got his man in the air just the slightest bit. Even if it wasn't in the air, it was off balance, and Maxi was able to you know, go right at the hip and take advantage of it. Orchard thought about the three. Shane Doyle gave it up. Conlon wanted the ball. Instead, now it's Doyle, the sophomore. Maxi all over him, but he gave him a pretty good look. Everything but the finish, and Howard pulls it down. Yeah, good offensive flow there, just as you said, Bob. Josh Reed called for the offensive foul, a player control foul. 
Will, there was one just like that, actually the first bucket of the game, and it wasn't called, and maybe that was kind of that shot across the bow, hey, you know, on the next one, you might get the call, and that time ran right through the chest of the defender. Exactly, the difference was once Reed made contact that first time, he pulled up and hit the jump shot. This time, Reed just keeps going right through the chest of the defender, and you see the chicken wing come out a little bit, a, a good call by the officials. Devin Prep and taking charges are two things that go hand in hand. Obviously, uh, Iman Walsh a couple of years ago, he's got a banner up at Devin Prep for over 100 charges taken in his career. You know, it's just all part of that Devin Prep culture. Uh, every time we do a Devin Prep game, uh, obviously last year you did a Devin Prep game at Devin Prep. They've got a great student section. You know, they play the game as a team. It's really, you know, all five. I shouldn't even say all five guys because their bench is always into it. It's always fun watching Devin Prep play. Mishak for three. It's good. And after a first quarter, Bruce, dominated by Archbishop Wood to this point, a big three, and all of a sudden, a two-point game. Yeah, Wood just kind of fell asleep on defense there a little bit. Left him with a wide-open three and took advantage. Bethea for the answer. Just a bit short. Boy, those great shooters, though, almost got it to curl back off the front rim and in. There's a good look from the corner. It's good. And Devin Prep leads. That's the sophomore Zane Conlon. And Zane Conlon's going to make Carson Howard come out, and that allows that dribble drive penetration to be even more effective. Gus Salem. He answers with his second triple of the night. This is the pace that we were promised here tonight. Two big time teams, a state champion in Devin Prep, and a state runner up in Archbishop Wood. Some miscommunication, though between Costello and Doyle. I mean, I, I do say this without hyperbole. Now again, Newman Goretti was playing at an extremely high level, but maybe you take them out of it. Devin Prep was playing as high a level of basketball as anybody when they cut down the nets in Hershey. And then if not for a little juggernaut known as Roman Catholic, you might be looking at Archbishop Wood as a state champ as well. These are two teams that are really good and bring back some talent. Final 22 seconds left, and Conlon will put it in his pocket. Here's Mishak, Jason Fisher, saying one shot here for the Tide. 14 seconds left. And, and one of the keys of the game that I talked about was Devin Prep's ability to, to fight Archbishop Wood inside, and so far they've done very well in this first quarter. Mishak. Has the mismatch, gets to the hoop, what a finish. How about that hesitation dribble? Unbelievably good move by Ty Misha. He had the matchup that he wanted. They got the switch with Carson Howard. And uh, then Misha says, let me go to work. Hesitation, blow by. And uh, then get to the other side of the rim to avoid the shot blocker. Howard still almost got it, but he, he got it up on the rim. Really, really nice job by Ty Misha. Mm -hmm. Little English up there as well, although our colleague Nasir Smith would tell you it's jelly. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the fact, you know, when you get to look at those replays, to see how the other players on the floor set up that play as well. Great spacing, yep. really vacating the lane to allow that drive to the basket. Isolation basketball, no doubt about it. Tied at 12, love it. Bruce, takeaways from eight minutes. Very impressed with Devin Prep. You know, down one of their best players, you would never know it. I mean, offensive flow has been very good. They really haven't missed a beat. Shot the ball well. Played inside very well. Defensively, you know, they're doing as best as can be expected against this tough Archbishop Wood team. And will, to be fair to Jason Fisher, Jason Holloway, and the rest of this tied team, Jason Holloway, albeit a star in the Catholic League, really is a picture-perfect fit for this particular team as well in his role when he's playing. Absolutely. He brings a lot of strength. I mean, he's built like a middle linebacker, and he brings a lot of athleticism to this Devin Prep team as well. I think that's the right call. Uh, we'll take a peek of this on the replay, and now oh. it's, it's overturned. Let's see who, who touches this thing last. Uh, we're a little late on uh, it. Yeah, my fault. All good. Um, but no, it was certainly, certainly a close call there. And, and you could see how both officials, you know, was there a tip perhaps? 
wasn't last off Jaleel, perhaps. It was, uh, but um, What you do like is the officials communicating on the play, though. And we've seen a lot of that at the PIAA level this year. Some really, really good officiating coming together and getting the call right. Corner three is no good. Good box out by the sophomore, Conlon, after the first offensive rebound on the possession was corralled by Carson Howard. Now Mishak. The quick ball movement here by the tie. Dressed in yellow. Tied at 12 against Archbishop Wood. Hmm. Boy, that was a fast five seconds. Huh. Bob, I know that your opinion on the five <laughs> second violation. That's a situation where, to me, Ty Mishok breaks the hip of the defender. He's moving forward. It's just one that where I, I personally wouldn't have blown the whistle. I, I, know, I think it's a stand. I mean, again, I don't know, but I think it's a standard at the high school level. It feels like they're told to emphasize it more than you would see, say, at the college level. Because, why, but why, Will? There is no shot clock in the PIAA. That's right. I can't say that there's no shot clock at the high school level because other states certainly do have the shot clock, um, but there's no uh, shot clock at the PIAA level. It's a really athletic play here. Jaleel Bethea. And they called that, not wow. in the act of shooting. So inbounding from underneath their own offensive basket. Michael Green checked into the game here for Archbishop Wood. Bea is in there as well. Bethea, good look inside. Carson Howard. Wow. That's great recognition on the inside, and the pass was perfect. And he kept the ball high, didn't he, Bruce? Didn't bring it down. Number one, Tyler Scarpula was in there for Devin Prep, just waiting for him to bring it down to him. Now undercut on the play. Foul goes on number five, Josh Reed. I believe that's Reed's second because of the offensive foul. Yeah, that is his second. So maybe you have to be a little careful with Josh Reed here in the, in the first half. Shane Doyle, the sophomore. To the line for two. Couple folks checking in. Ryan says, roll tide. Maybe, of course, we're talking about the Devon Prep tide. Steve the Legend, as we like to say, he, he comments a lot, so we appreciate that. Steve the Legend, self-proclaimed, says, hi from Huntington Valley. Love high school basketball because you get so many great teams playing on a given night. I totally agree. Well, not tonight. I mean, this is the only Catholic League game, right? Bingo. <laughs> You'll have to tune in tomorrow as Bob Long Sports will be at LaSalle High School taking on Conwell Egan in Silent Night, which is a tradition dating back to 2013. It's ten, uh, what, 10 year anniversary? Maybe even 11 I now? believe so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 2021, there was no uh, yeah. Silent Night due to COVID. Uh, but yeah, no, it's always, uh, always a great scene at LaSalle College High School for Silent Night. Here's Green. And Josh Reed to the elbow, step back. And again, Conlon just squaring up one of the best rebounders in the Catholic League, Carson Howard again. Yeah, I'm loving that Devon Prep defense so far. 14 apiece, 543 to play, second quarter. Devon Prep was ahead of the curve in terms of tracking charges. Obviously, they recognize Eamon Walsh. I wonder if they're going to start tracking box outs because it's not Zane Conlon getting the boards, but he's creating them. Lucas Orchard's taking off his hands. What a play by Reed. Orchard got it back. Mishak, yes. Oh, wow. Look what I found. Bruce, that was Joey Suarez range. We <laughs> saw him play at this gym uh, at the Moscow. Howard lowers the shoulder and a little bit of Uncle Mo in favor of Devin Prep here on the road. One more look. Again, squared him up, lowered the shoulder. Good call on the baseline. And I think that's what I, you know, talked about, about the impatience on offense. I think that Archbishop would have been a little bit quick on the draw on the offensive end, and I think in large part to Devin's prep, Devin Prep's patience when they've got the basketball. Mishak. They go into the half-court set. Conlon traveled with it. Turnover with 5.03 to play in the second quarter. 
And that's a great job by uh, Archbishop Wood, kind of going into a random run and jump. We're going to trap the corners on this possession. Uh, with the substitutions, maybe they, they bring in that call with the substitutions, but just a really, really nice defensive uh, possession there. Well, and to your point, didn't come out of a timeout, didn't even come out of a made basket. It came out of a charge. Yep. Good composure and good leadership by this Archbishop Wood team. And a good call by you, Will. Bethea, wow, how did he catch that ball? All the way to the hoop. Count it, and one. Yeah. No fear to the basket, Bruce. Absolutely right. Love these guys getting aggressive going to the basket. And they have to tonight. They, they have the advantage on the inside. Will, you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we were out at uh, Chambersburg High School, which is just as far away from Philadelphia as it sounds, <laughs> but a tremendous facility, no less, and we were treated wonderfully while we were out there. Jaleel Bethea taking on North Hills and, uh, and Parham, who's a heck of a player out there, but Jaleel Bethea just decimated North Hills from deep, hitting 11 threes, Two foul shots and one two-point basket en route to 37 points and a quarterfinal blowout. Yeah, there's no doubt. And uh, you can that was definitely a coming out party. Jaleel Bethea, we've seen some really good performances from him. Actually, I want to say either the game, two games before, uh, when they played Ply Plymouth White Marsh at yes. Cardinal O'Hara, we were doing that game as well. And he got the start that game. He had been a bench, uh, largely a bench player for most of the season. He got the start that game and had something like 21 or 23 points. Uh, and you kind of got the feeling that he was getting hot for the state playoffs. Yeah, and I can understand why Archbishop Wood wants to pick up the tempo of this game. And they're trying to do it defensively. Good look, though. Mishak oh. getting hot. Man. He's hit some daggers early on here, just when Archbishop Wood has started to crawl back the momentum. 4.09 to play, second quarter. Here's Gus Salem. He's got two triples on the day. Been a big part of the Archbishop Wood offense. Just checked back into the game. Michael Green on the flyby. And there's a foul. Marcus Dixon going to play his football at Clemson next year. Yeah, and that time it was the box out by number 24, Ben Costello. And then Lucas Orchard going to get the rebound. Dixon kind of reaches around it and almost clocks him in the face. Uh, definitely warrants a good call. Can't be stated enough. Devin Prep, their state champs last year, very competitive in the Catholic League, one of the best leagues in the country. There were folks out there saying, what a difficult decision to come to the Catholic League. How many years is it going to take that for them to win a Catholic League game? I think some of that was overkill, but the history of this program, certainly they have a lot of pride in it. Catholic League, you think of a different level of hoops, and candidly, it is. And Jason Fisher and this team will have not only adjusted to it, they've relished it, and they've played to an extremely high level. Now, a technical foul was just called against John Mosco, head coach of Archbishop Wood. So it'll be interesting to see. I, I believe they're going to wave this free throw yeah. off. And Ty Mishock's probably like, what the heck? I, I think that <laughs> might be one of those field goal kickers as well, where you, you hear a whistle, you're not sure if it's a timeout. You go ahead and kick the field goal to get some reps. I think he knew, but perhaps not. So now what you have here is it's Devin Preps in the bonus. He'll shoot the technical foul shots. And they just said foul shots good, I believe. Wow, okay. Wow. Interesting. And yeah, we see it reflected on the score now, 17 to 21. So they're saying the officials have confirmed that the technical happened I guess at least simultaneous with, if not after, the free throw make. So this Mishak's second technical foul shot. And now we should have one more from the line. 
which he'll take without the folks actually in the foul lane. And then Devin Prep will get the basketball. So he'll end up getting four free throws out of this. Four. And goes two for four. But the best part is they've got the ball and a five-point lead. Mishak, he's been the player I've been most impressed with thus far. Lucas Orchard says hello from deep. Boy, Archbishop Wood is really going to have to start extending that defense. And Green now, for three. It was Devin Prep in the run and jump there. Yeah. And on the box out, Tyler Scarpula uh, clocked Deuce Maxi. So <laughs> as soon as they blew the whistle, Scarpula kind of gave the thumbs up like, yep. I hit him, you're right. <laughs> Maxi, who got the start tonight with Milan Dean's unavailability today. Jaleel Bethea, now the double comes on him. Green is open for three. And Scarpolo, I think, did enough to impact that active shooting. And Devin Prep in no hurry here. Yeah, this is their pace, Bruce. Get into the half court and force a little bit of over-aggression. Dixon picks up his second foul in the span of a minute and a half. Another look here, Will. I get what he's trying to do. Hedge high and allow Maxi to get back into the play and try to recover, but too much of a bump. Yeah, and that's that's a point guard kind of thrusting his body into the big man, saying, you know, let's see if the official makes a call here, and and good on time Mishak doing that. Ninth team foul against Archbishop Wood. Mishak nails the front end anyway. With that being said, I do sympathize with Marcus Dixon there. You know, high hedge, and it did certainly seem like Ty Mishak kind of threw himself into the body of, of Dixon. Mishak goes one of two, 2.46 to play. There's Salem. Gus Salem knocking down those first two threes opened up that dribble drive there because you have to close out so hard on him. Jaleel Bethea for three. Right when the Vikings needed it. You're exactly right there. They've been cold from beyond the arc so far this first half. That was good contest as well by Devin Prep. That's not so good contest. Didn't hit it though. Offensive rebound, it was halfway down. Good hands though by the Vikings. Numbers. Maxi. Bethea, big time rebound and I think fortunate, candidly, for Devin Prep that Mishak called for that foul. I don't know if that's his first or his second, but you were gonna see an opportunity for Bethea to snatch that and put it right back up and off the glass for two. And it's just his first, so a, a good foul by Mishok there. But they, that's a really tough shot. Under two minutes to go, second quarter. There's a basket inside. Costello, it's 28-20. Tyler Scarpula, we've seen him hit the three a couple times. Last year, LaSalle versus Devin Prep, he hit two gigantic threes. That time, because he's a three-point threat, able to drive the baseline, he takes it right to the rim. Nice job by number one. That's just the sixth team foul against Devin Prep. Shane Doyle. Jason Fisher on the bench does not like it. With the next foul, Devin Prep will be in the bonus. With the next Devin Prep foul, Archbishop Wood will be in the, the single bonus. And Devin Prep has had a lot of opportunities at the line. I think with a little more success at the free throw, Line. Devin Prep would really be uh, in control of this game. Yeah, Two. and you would generally expect a time Mishok to knock those down a bit uncharacteristic for the point guard. 
Duke Harrow just checked in for Devin Prep. That was him nearly getting a hand on it. What a look inside by Green. Extra one, Bea in the corner. Salem, big time rebound, but didn't quite get the feet set. That would have been a situation where Gus Salem would have been well served to maybe kick it out. Number one, see if anyone's relocating on the perimeter. Uh, it's often been said that the best time to get a three-pointer is off of an offensive rebound. I just don't see why Devin Preff would re release the basketball. And they give it away, Bruce, to your point. I mean, with the double bonus and up by eight and only 40 seconds, I, do I don't get it. Thirty-one seconds left. And a block. That is the seventh team foul against Devin Prep. Second against Ty Mishok. I will take a peek at this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at, at first look, I thought maybe a charge, but Mishok just a little late on that hedge there, and Bethea kind of got around him a little bit, so nice call. And it's really difficult to be... A head coach, of course, Will Bruce. But, you know, one there, you actually had the stoppage after the turnover. Would Jason Fisher have thought about pulling a guy like Miss Shock, knowing that it was probably just one more possession defensively? They weren't going to get the ball. or Maybe they do, but, again, the thought there now, well, he's, he's still going to stay out there. Yeah, only, well, now only because two it's an fouls offensive. and an offensive possession. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, had he had two fouls on that turnover, I think you'd probably pull him, but... Yep. With only one foul, and he's one of your better defenders, specifically on-ball defenders. You know, he's a very strong individual. Uh, yeah, I, I don't mind that personnel at all. 27 seconds on the clock. I think in this situation, you'll uh, more likely to see Devin Prep hold for this last shot. Mishak defended by Bea. 14 seconds left, and a foul called against Bea. I know the Archbishop Wood bench doesn't like it, but I, I just don't know that you need to be guarding him that far out there and that tightly. Right, you got a crafty guard, a crafty upperclassman who can create that contact. Absolutely. Ty Mishak, what he does there is as soon as he sees Bea come towards him, he's yep. like, okay, I can go into the body because he's off balance. He's not in legal guarding position. It really is crafty by Ty Mishok. And I guess that's why you keep him out there, Will. That's why he's down there and I'm up here. And the very likely next thing, because you do have somebody at the scorer's table, is, hey, make a foul shot, get him off the floor for this last defensive possession of the half. And that's really good coaching. And there you go. Here comes Mishok off the floor with the two fouls for the last defensive possession of the half. And it's the first we'll see of Reese Kraft, who's, who's really actually a pretty, provides length for this Devon Prep team. Gotta hustle the ball up court here. Seven seconds left for Salem. Bethea stepped on the sideline, and now they can get Mishok right back into the game if they want. Yeah, they just kind of lackadaisically bringing the ball up and just weren't prepared at all on that possession. Yeah, the idea there was to set a fade screen for Bethea, but with the with the uh, aggressive coverage, it pushed Bethea out a little farther than the than the play probably had designed, and he steps on that uh, out of bounds line. Four point one seconds left. Orchard down to two. Gets a decent look. No good. So halftime, it's 30 to 22, the visitors with the lead. Looks like Bob Long might have an opportunity to have a quick interview with Coach Fisher. Down here with Jason Fisher. Jason, great first half from your team. Took an early punch from Archbishop Wood. What went well for you guys? I think we just started playing defense in that second quarter. So hopefully we can keep it up. They'll make some adjustments. He does a good job with them. So we'll make, try to make some as well. Without playing with Jason today, think you guys have adjusted well? I will see you in about 16 minutes. <laughs> Thank you for your time. We'll send it back to you guys. All right. You know, I love the coaches' interviews as they're heading out to halftime. It's just, uh, you know, they've got other things on their mind other than talking to us, but just great insight 
into, you know, what really counts, and that is, you know, getting to the locker room, getting in front of your team, and, you know, making some adjustments. I'm, I just marvel at how these coaches can go from X and O's out on the court to X and X's and O's in the locker room so fast because it's a quick change. Yeah, there's no doubt, absolutely. Uh, with that, we'll send it to halftime, and uh, we'll be back in about nine minutes. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above, and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time. Hmm. But it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make. Hmm. Some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest, no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely? Welcome back to Archbishop Wood. It is halftime here, and Devin Prep leads the Vikings of Archbishop Wood in impressive effort, 30 to 22. We'll now bring you inside our broadcast booth and look who we have, special guest this evening, Josh Verlin of City of Basketball Love. It's great to have you here. I'm sure it's been about 100 basketball games that you've seen since the last time I saw you. <laughs> no, just about that, yeah. Which about. wasn't that long ago, but it is great to see you, my friend. Good to see you too. Yeah, I'm sure your viewers were like, whoa, Bruce looks different. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. But uh, this game here, Josh, has been very, very impressive. We talked a little bit pregame about how this and so many games are proceeding, even early on here. Uh, Devin Prep down Jason Holloway today. Milan Dean not playing for Archbishop Wood. What did you see from both teams as they play a little shorthanded? Yeah, I think what we've come to love about Devin Prep over the last few years under Jason Fisher is clearly this is one of the best coach teams in the Catholic League. And you know as well as anybody that that is a, a high bar. I mean, yes, this is, is a impressive league from a coaching standpoint. And that's really a credit to the job that Fisher and his coaches have done, the fact that they can lose a Jason Holloway, their only Division I committed player. And he and, about, and Lucas Orchard are about you know, equal uh, in terms of talent and ability and what they bring to the sure. team. But certainly one of their big three pieces. And to come into Archbishop Wood, sands Jason Holloway and be up eight at halftime tells you 
how good his program just buys into that next man up mentality, yep. buys into the coaching, buys into playing their system. They're defending Jaleel Bethea incredibly well. You can hear the coaches are constantly yelling shooter and driver and getting their guys to be aware of what personnel are on the floor at any given moment. And, you know, as I said, that's a credit to the coaching staff to have them this well prepared and just ready to play. Of course, Archbishop Wood lost a ton from the state runner-up last year. Jaleel Bethea tr thrust into that leader role. Here you see Gus Salmus transferred in doing a nice job. What have you seen from Archbishop Wood to this point? What do you think the key will be for them in the next month and a half? Yeah, so I just covered them Monday night in their win against Cardinal O'Hara on their first Catholic League win of the year. And clearly from between that game and this game, it's a team that's just learning how to win. You know, they're very young. As talented as Bethea is, as much as he grew up this summer on the recruiting circuit, you still have to remember he's only a junior in high school and yep. not a kid that has played a ton of games in his first three years. It's not was not a high level, you know, middle schooler that everybody was talking about that came into Wood as a day one starter as a freshman. He was a JV kid as a freshman and then right. started to play some a lot more last year, but but not with this responsibility that he has to shoulder this season. And so I think we all just sort of assumed Wood Wood would keep rolling, but they've got still very much have to learn how to win in this league. And Devin Prep doesn't have that. They figured that out last year. They are a very confident team. And I think right now you're seeing that confidence play out right in front of us. Sure. As we look around the rest of the Catholic League, we're lucky here tonight and that this is the only game on the docket in the league. Tomorrow, that's obviously not the case. Huge night in the Catholic League. What stands out to you? I think what stands out to me... Well, on a positive note, say Archbishop Carroll, I think maybe has been the positive surprise. Roman Catholic probably playing a little better than I thought they might with some, they're working in some new pieces, but they seem to have congealed or coalesced a lot earlier in the season than some of these other teams have. But I think what sticks out to me is just the overall depth. And it's something that we were aware of, but then for Carroll to come up to Wood and, be, and win here at Wood, and now Devin Preps up here at eight, and this is a really good Archbishop Wood team. Yeah. And then you look at that, you know, and a, a Cardinal O'Hara and a Roman Catholic and Bonner's how much good and Bonner oh my, how much year. better is Father Judge this yeah. year. And you know, there's so many good teams. The fact that we're sitting here talking about, you know, if, if Devin Prep wins this game, we're talking about a three and one and a one and three. If Wood wins, they're both two and two. And yet this is a, as you said, crucial game for seeding. This game is going to matter three or four weeks from now when we look at the final standings. The, the depth is just so impressive. The number I pull out of my pocket is 10. That if the right set of circumstances coalesce, to use the word, that 10 teams have a chance to win a state championship. I, I don't know if that's over or understating it, but that's how good this, in a 15-team league, there are maybe Four, 9, 14. 10. 14? 15, 14. Is that right? I'm thinking, do they play 13 regular season yeah. games? Okay. Either way. <laughs> it's a lot of teams. That have a chance to win. Not, not just state titles, but whatever 10 teams make it into the Catholic League playoff yeah. will have a legitimate chance to win the league. Right. Right. If, you know, whoever that 10th best team is, is it going to be a high quality? It could be one of these two teams in front of us. Sure. And there are any, any of them are good enough. Yeah. And so I, I think that's very interesting. And these teams in the Catholic League have proven themselves in the non-league as well. It's... It's not as if they're just beating each other up. No. They showed in the non-league that this is the most competitive league in the state. I think the 15 was um, before uh, McDevitt. Dev. Oh, I think that's, I think that's what it was, yeah. Add Devin, remove Bishop McDevitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Picking um, up what you're putting down. When I first started COBL, Newman Garetti was on a 73-game league winning yeah streak. i remember that. and i remember it at the time remember who, remember who stopped that by i was at that game the yeah, LaSalle game. LaSalle it was a fantastic Force. game and i remember at the time understanding oh that this is a big deal in the catholic league and then losing the streak was a big deal in the catholic league but now when you look at the depth of the league i don't think we will ever see that again yeah i think you're probably right about that i, I don't even know if you'll see a team go 13 and 0 anymore yeah it's just that good Sorry, Will's waiting to, to step, step no. back in here. We're Thanks for doing this. Yeah, and absolutely. We, we, we will head back to the third quarter. But Josh Verlin, City Basketball absolutely. Love, great seeing you, great buddy. Seeing you, Bob. <laughs> All right, about ready to get back underway. Bob Long, Bruce Badgley, and Will Ryan alongside. Will, we determined in the midst of uh, that interview that the Catholic League, we were saying 14 or 15 teams does the league have, and 
I had it at 15, he had it at 14. We determined that it was because when Devin came in, there was a year or two before Bishop McDevitt closed down. 14-team league. Yeah, 14-team league, 10 teams. Obviously, just to go over the playoff picture real yeah. quick. Uh, 7 versus 10, 8 versus 9, and then it goes into the quarterfinals. Good follow inside Costello. And Devin Prep picks up right where they left off. Yeah, right where they left off in, you know, being very productive inside. Something that they needed to have happen to stay in this game. Got Salem. That was halfway down. Conlin, another nice defensive rebound. Orchard. Here's Doyle, guarded by Salem. And Devin Prep into this half-court look that they execute so well. Conlin stops on a dime. Costello. And Bethea goes up high to get it. Reed, contact, count it, and one. Uh, I'm interested to see. I think they were a little generous with the, with the continuation, but... Uh, No, it looks like he's yeah. head, he's going up. I agree. And I don't think it well, was Costello, I believe. I don't think Costello was in legal guarding position either. You know, I think good call all around there. Something that I noticed two possessions ago for Archbishop Wood and something that they should probably go back to is dribble handoffs with Carson Howard because Zane Conlin's playing off of him. He's not able to hedge uh, as they would be able to on, on other plays. So Gus Salem actually got a, a pretty open mid-range uh, look because um, Zane Collins off Carson Howard. That one knocked back in bounds. There's Howard on the floor. Quick jump ball call there. I don't know how the heck Devin Prep would have gotten a hand on that. I've seen Carson Howard was like hugging the ball yeah. <laughs> on top of it. Alternate possession, though, will keep it here with the Vikings of Archbishop Wood. In the first two minutes, beginning and end of half, so very important so far. Archbishop Wood looking good. Yeah, that's a great look for Deuce Maxey. Can't argue with that out of the baseline inbounds. Time, Mishak. Trying to work high ball screen. There's Mishak to the elbow. Wood switches well off Orchard to prevent the dribble drive. Conlin, he spins to his left hand. How about that body control? And just great patience on offense, working for the good look inside. Great patience as a team and great patience individually as well. And now a three second call as the the tides are starting to turn, pun Ayo, intended. Love it. Love that one, Will. The tides are starting to turn. Oh, my. The Devon Prep Tide. Oh, Bruce, hey. Welcome. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Costello, deep three. Are you kidding me? He's got five early ones here in the second half. Just two and a half minutes in. And Conlin picks up the personal foul. Second team foul against Devin Prep in the second half. Yeah, not a bad foul. I think he had to stop the momentum. He was just going to turn around and lay it in if he didn't foul him. Oh. Good hands. Costello knocked it out of bounds right in front of us. Salem off the ball screen, gets to the elbow, and he is so good from the mid-range. Good half-court set. And, and a ball screen with Carson Howard has the same effect. If they're going to play off, you can't hedge and show on that screen. So get some more ball screen actions and some more dribble handoffs involving Carson Howard. Gus Salem has been the benefit so far, but if you can get Jalil Bethea involved in that as well, I think it could uh, lead to some... Could be some threes, could be some easy mid-range uh, buckets for this Vikings team. 
I think the Vikings have to somehow generate some energy. I mean, it's very quiet in this gym. I think that, you know, offensively, they've got to generate a little bit more energy to get back in this game. They're down 11 points here early on in here in the third quarter. And what it's been so far is Devin Prep is, is taking 30 to 35 seconds, um, you know, for a shot to go up. And on those shots, there hasn't really been that long rebound that ignites transition. Uh, so Wood hasn't really been able to get into the transition game thus far. Devin Prep in the yellow and Archbishop Wood in the white. Mishak, a deep three was halfway down and that should stay, I believe. There's your confirmation. Jaleel Bethea got in there to mix it up but it was last touched by Bethea. Orchard spins his way out of what could have been a double team there on the baseline. And that one's blocked and could not keep the feet in bounds. That's an NFL go to the replay. Ooh, the foot just on the white. No catch. <laughs> that doesn't take away from a really, really nice defensive play by Josh Reed. Incredibly athletic, and it's exactly what uh, coaches teach, Well, in that, hey, if you block it, you, know, you don't have to block it into the third row. Give yourself a chance. Good hands there, Gus Salem. Bethea, Maxi in the corner. Finally, he lets him in. He's had two or three great looks from the corner. That's a big one. Single digit deficit for Archbishop Wood. 4.25 to go third quarter. And maybe that Archbishop Wood defense is gonna create the energy. And there's Maxi, he maybe had a lane just momentarily. Offensive foul. Josh Reed, that's his second personal foul of the offensive variety tonight. Devin Prep does so well to just get their body in a position where regardless of if you think Josh Reed pushes off or not, the reality of the situation is he's going straight into the center of his chest, so it's not going to be a block no matter what. And it's just really, really good job of legal guarding position by Devin Prep. And it forces the issue, right? Is, is the official going to have a no call or is it going to be a charge? But it's not going to be a block. Doyle, good slip. Lucas Orchard with the left hand. That is so sweet using the basket to shield the defender. And set up by the fade screen slip. Jaleel Bethea soft off the front rim. And knocked out of bounds. Big play by Michael Green inside, mixing it up amongst the trees. Another look here is Green. In a pretty good spot and throws it right off the defender. Bethea. Yeah, off the dribble there, very effective. Uh, yeah. I like how in recent possessions, Archbishop Wood has run these sets, sometimes off baseline inbounds, but to get looks in the mid-range, it's a much higher percentage look. I know it's two versus three, but that's where these guys are comfortable. Salem and Bethea, oh, there's a my. three from deep from Conlon. Devin Prep just on fire this half. Wow, what a look. Eyes in the back of his head from Bethea. Carson Howard, end one. I'd like to see this one, that's for sure. I think him going down distracted the Devon Prep defense. It's funny, he took this big hop looking to get to a jump stop, but he really let go of the ball before he even jump stopped. It's a big time play by a big time athlete. Absolutely, and a nice job by Carson Howard catching the ball high, doesn't bring it down, you know, keeps it up, and, and a nice finish on the left side of the rim. Archbishop Wood with a key answer. Devin Prep hit a three. Last time down the floor, Archbishop Wood goes the old-fashioned way for three. Orchard looks to answer right back. Long rebound for Costello. This is Scarpolo. Great look for Doyle. Bang! Oh, my. Devin Archbishop Wood disorganized on the defensive glass. Devin Prep has answered 
every time Archbishop Wood has gone after him. And there's a foul called. It goes against Lucas Orchard. Love the no call against Costello. Jason Fisher and Devin Prep fans don't. But again, I think a little soft, a little deep. I think the replay yeah. stands by what the officials called. Well. Carson Howard does well to land on two. He's not out of control. He's not going through the body per se. He's just, you know, jump stopping. And he, he, really nice job to keep the officials from blowing that whistle. Howard at times has struggled from the line. Big free throws here. You know, a lot of coaches will say that you, you the player, gets to dictate how the game's going to be refereed. And when Carson Howard's strong with the ball, goes off of two feet, less inclined to call the charge there. One of two for Carson Howard. He'll check out of the game, I would assume, momentarily. I think he's going to be key, Bruce, if they're going to come back in this game. Absolutely. And I think here's where Coach Mosco is going to try and have his defense create some of this energy here. Slip to the basket, Lucas oh, Orchard. Man. Deuce Maxi. Spectacular. Here we go, folks. This is Catholic League basketball. Welcome to Philadelphia. This is how we do it in this part. There's Archbishop Wood. Reed. And there's Mishak. What a play. That one's blocked by Reed. And a foul is called against Bea. What a sequence there. First of all, the recognition by Ty Mishak to pick the pocket. He tries to create a little spit. So, the pickpocket right here, as soon as he turns his back, Devin Prep known for that. Don't turn your back against Devin Prep. Goes down the other way, tries to initiate the contact with Reed. Reed with the athleticism and wingspan says that's not going to work against me. And also, Shane Doyle, the sophomore, got on his horse to get back, stopped the ball. Reed, when he got that ball, thought he was going to get right to the rim. And Lucas Orchard answers again. I'll be honest with you, I thought Wood was doing a great job baiting Devin Prep into a fast-paced game, but actually Devin Prep in this up-tempo style has really shown yeah, well, the last couple minutes. What does Devin thrive on? It's lane penetration and kickouts for threes. And with that up-tempo style, they can get in transition a little bit more, get their dribble drives, and then kick out for open threes or look behind for an open three. It's really, really good basketball. Lucas oh. Orchard. Stepped on the sideline. Oh, what a play, though. Uh, what a, a tremendous effort on the inbounds. There's another look. One twenty-nine to go third quarter. It's been an excellent third quarter. Devin Prep, though, has extended the lead by the order of five points. Bethea, no. Not in rhythm and pretty well defended by Doyle. I one minute and five seconds left. Do you think they hold for one? I, I No Why reason not? to release the basketball. How in control is Mishak? That five-second clock starts, then he gets to a spot. Orchard. Offensive rebound, and now they can really pull it back. 40 seconds left. Yeah, I don't dislike that look from Lucas Orchard, though. That's your first-team All-Catholic player with an open elbow jump shot. And it works out. You get your offensive rebound. You have a 13-point lead. 23 seconds left. It's been a clinic here tonight by an undermanned Devon Prep team. A absolutely. You know, the game is so much about execution, and Devon Prep has just executed every facet of the game beautifully tonight. Six seconds left. This could be an early dagger. Corner three. Halfway down. 
They don't get the shot off, will not count. And that one, I don't know, the Archbishop Wood God's keeping that one from going down the cylinder. I don't know how that happened, but I think it keeps the Vikings in the game. Yeah, there's no doubt. And on that last Archbishop Wood possession, you saw Shane Doyle kind of face guarding Julio Bethea, and Archbishop Wood does well to run some off-ball screens for him. But once he gets the catch, because Doyle was bothering him a little bit, I think he got a little antsy and wanted to get up a shot, uh, You know, knowing how hard it is to get open, trying to take advantage of finally getting open. Jaleel Bethea has to be willing to, you know, maybe set set a couple off-ball screens himself, you know, force some help, and then that's when he'll be able to pop back to the ball, you know, see if they can run that uh, elevator screen play and look for the slip. Last time they got it into Carson Howard, and the slip was there. Howard had already put the ball on the ground, though. But the opportunities are there for uh, Archbishop Wood. They just need to finish possessions. Uh, I mean, Devin Prep's gotten a lot of offensive rebounds. Um, finish possessions and, and you know, kind of re, re-involve Jaleel Bethea in the offense. Hey, uh, where are you at? And we'll put another call out there. Let us know where you're watching the game from, and we'll give you a shout-out on the air. Uh, indirectly, our buddy Brother Andre, Andre Noble, checking in. Uh, he retweeted or replied to our buddy Josh Verland's tweet about being here. He said, is there a stream? First of all, Andre, come on, man. <laughs> come on. All you got to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, my friend, and you'll know exactly when there's a stream. But uh, big news from Imhotep land, Will. Why don't you tell us about it? Absolutely. So the date is the same. The location is the same. Uh, For those who don't know, Imhotep versus Camden, January 28th, St. Joe's University, 2 p.m. is the time. Hey, Andre, give us a call, buddy. (laughs) We're looking forward to that one, though. Now, one of our, truly one of our favorites, uh, we did one of their games in the state playoffs last year, hung on against a really (laughs) gritty Marple Newtown team en route to uh, inevitably running away with a state championship. Tremendous team. There's Deuce Maxey, much needed to start the fourth quarter. That MOTEP Marple Newtown game. One of the top five games that I've broadcast. Uh, incredible game. Uh, then another fun one that you and I did was Archbishop Ryan against Imhotep. That game was at LaSalle College High School in the District 12 playoffs. That was short. Here's Archbishop Wood. They get the stop they need. Salem. Devin Prep, so good getting back in transition. But they account it and won. Well, that Moscow Magic coming out of that third quarter huddle. Whatever he said, it worked. A great start, an extra level of aggression, a big time finish. But I think that they they moved their offense well inside the three point range. And that's where I felt they should have been the whole night because they have such, I think, an advantage inside. And Jaleel Bethea gets the two points, hopefully a third here, but Deuce Maxey's screen opened up that entire play, an off-ball screen, uh, allowing Bethea to kind of get going towards the rim. Halfway down. So if you're Devin Prep, you're going up-tempo or you're going patience? I don't think you're putting it in your pocket, but I think you're playing deliberate basketball. It's what got you to this point. They can turn the switch on and off, Bruce, and it doesn't seem to affect their energy, their extra step. Costello. Orchard again, and Jabalil Bethea was step for step. Corner three, it's blocked. Josh Reed reaches for the rafters. Hopefully I was quick enough on the camera to get that. (laughs) We'll see, we're the only ones that don't know. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job, Bruce. And that one was sent into the third row, Bob. What a display of athleticism. The ball a little higher. Uh, The ball was off Conlon's hands. His last three-point block was still in the hands. Doyle, that's well long. Rebound by Bethea. Maxi. Eyes up floor by Bethea. Didn't go over the back. Good body control. This star junior 
willing his team back in the game. Timeout, Jason Fisher, 5.53 to go. Here's some life in the building. Absolutely, and I think that was a really good timeout there by Jason Fisher, and it wasn't a we're freaking out timeout. It was we'll get the ball across, and we're gonna, you know, we're not gonna call it right as soon as the ball goes into the basket. We're not at that panic mode right now. We'll get the ball across because we're doing what we want to do. Um, I really like the message that Devin Prep just sent there. Bruce Badgley, why don't you tell us what's going on in your world? Of course, you are with SportsStream Premium Network. You do work with Penn Live in Berks County. We like to hear what is going on with you, and we're so thrilled that you're with us here tonight. Yeah, I tell you what, when uh, you gave me the opportunity to come down here and, you know, this was a game, uh, a night that I'm free, one of the few nights that I'm free. You <laughs> that, that's true. Mention the fact that, uh, you know, I'm doing things for Penn Live, not only uh, boys basketball, but uh, we did some uh, wrestling. And then uh, we start here uh, next week with uh, LL Hoops. In fact, we have our version of the uh, Moscow Invitational. It's the uh, Mid-Pen LL uh, challenge uh, shootout uh, that's on the 21st we'll have six games on NFHS network and so between those two uh, uh, venues LL Hoops and Penn Live boy we're going to be hopping all the way through the postseason Five minutes and 46 seconds to play. It was a 13 point lead for Devin Prep. At the end of three, a 7-0 run by Archbishop Wood to start, and it's a turnover. Conlon touched the basketball after it was tipped by Reed. Josh Reed making plays defensively today. I don't know how many points he has. I know he had a, you know, a pull up earlier, and a, we counted it as a dunk earlier, but it's, it's been his defense that's really showing up. Bethea for three. That one's short, but Carson Howard all alone. Four point game, 9-0 run. And the big difference here for Wood to get back in this game is they're starting to work the ball inside. Five minutes left, it's an eternity in high school basketball. Devin Prep with a lot of patience here. This is Conlon. And now Lucas Orchard, the senior leader. Guarded by Jaleel Bethea and now Mishak. He really is the guy to get things under control, isn't he? Absolutely. And even when he gets deep into the paint, still under control, still finds his man. Doesn't matter where he is in the half court set, he's under control. Mishak, that's a deep triple. And Bethea brings it down amidst the trees. Open three. Gus Salem couldn't hit it. And he's a little gimpy coming back down the floor, as is Ben Costello. Yeah, Ben Costello for Devin Prep. It looked like he just mouthed to the uh, Archbishop Wood trainer that it's a cramp, and he's being treated as such. The way he went down, it, it didn't look like, you know, it, it wasn't one of those ACL situations or anything like that, thankfully. Uh, you know, just a cramp. Well, that last possession for Devin Prep, really the first time I think we've seen all game where they maybe got a little impatient on offense. But it's certainly not a shot that we haven't seen Mishak take today. No. You know, and, and hit. Yes, absolutely. They'll look inside the John Mosco led huddle. There's actually six guys in that huddle, so one of them is not going <laughs> to. <laughs> It'll be Gus Salem checking out of the game. He was a little banged up on the play, not certainly as visibly as what we saw from Costello. So he'll head to the end of the bench. Not getting any medical attention, which is good. Yeah, when, when you talk to players around the Philadelphia Catholic League, Philadelphia Catholic League games are so taxing on the body. I mean, you, you give it your, you know, 150%, and, and afterwards you are, you are tired, you're beat up, 
you got your bumps and bruises, and certainly we're seeing that in this game. Uh-oh, we're not talking load management at some point, <laughs> are we, Will? I don't think so. <laughs> There's Scarpula. Mishak, and nobody there in the corner. The only folks dressed in yellow were the cheerleaders in the first row. <laughs> Yeah, he just kind of lost his footing and was desperate to get rid of it. It has been about as close to a perfect first half of a quarter that we've seen. 9-0 for Archbishop Wood. Their most recent possession that they didn't score on, they got Gus Salen, who's already hit two triples, to set his feet and have a wide open three from the corner. That one just didn't go. But Carson Howard got the offensive rebound and put it back in. Yeah. And what's impressed me is Archbishop Wood is not getting undisciplined defensively. Down 13 in the fourth quarter, some teams might think, hey, we need to you know, try to get some steals and such. Archbishop Wood is just digging in and defending. They're doing a really, really nice job. Yeah, they've only committed two fouls in the half so far. Here's Deuce Maxey. Bethea sets the ball screen. 3.31 to go. Maxi spins. Tough shot, he's hit, and he'll shoot two. Ty Mishok picks up the personal foul. That's at least three on him. And it is indeed his third. Archbishop Wood a chance to score with the clock stopped, which in the final minutes of these games is worth its weight in gold. Well, your thoughts on Maxi? I know you're, you're pretty well aware of him, and he came into a larger role, of course, this year, particularly with the loss of Justin Moore, among others. You know, Tyson Allen as well. Absolutely. He, what impresses me about him, JV player last year, an opportunity you know, where he can play against some kids that are older than him. Not, not a whole lot of freshmen play JV ball. Um, but he, he's found what he's good at. He's really good at driving into the lane and shooting those little mid-range or, or floaters, and he gets to his spot often. Excellent offense. Orchard just didn't hit the three, and Bethea. Archbishop Wood can take the lead on this offensive possession. I think he did keep his hand on top of the ball there. Good discipline by this officiating crew. Bethea. Bea hasn't seen much time here today. Rises, and that's well short. I don't know if that's the luck that the bench wanted there, the coaching staff for Archbishop Wood. Tough double, and Bea comes up with a steal. He attacks on his own. How about that? Wow, the onslaught by Wood here the last two minutes has been incredible. 13-0 run for the Vikings. Two minutes to go, two minutes and seven seconds to be exact. The lead has been erased. Orchard, it's blocked. It'll stay on this side of the floor. Carson Howard. And a lot of it has been on the inside for Archbishop Wood. Time out on the floor. This is what we came for, as did the rest of the folks here tonight and everybody watching alongside. Two and one in the league is Devin Prep, missing Jason Holloway. Archbishop Wood, one and two in the league, got their first win in Catholic League play on Monday against Cardinal O'Hara, another team that that was a huge seeding game. They all are at this point. And Archbishop Wood has a chance to get to 500. They have some winnable games coming up in the next few weeks, right? It's been pretty much gauntlet, 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 gauntlet in their first four games, right? A much improved Archbishop Carroll team in the second game. Roman Catholic, it speaks for itself. Cardinal O'Hara, very good this year. Had Redding down 19 points, a game that Redding came back and won, but that shows you their offensive output potential. And then here, Devin Prep reigning 3A state champs. How's that for the first four that you got to play? 
with Newman Garetti, West Catholic et al. waiting for you as yeah, well. That's what I was about to say, Bob. Like you think that you, you get through, you know, Roman Catholic, obviously one of the best teams in the league. Cardinal O'Hara, very good. Archbishop Carroll, very good. But then there's still <laughs> there's still teams out there like a Devon Prep, like a Newman Garetti, like a West Catholic that you haven't even mentioned that you don't even mention yet. Saint Joe's Prep, much improved. Saint Joe's Prep, very good. Bonner Prendergrass, much better. There's a grab. It is only the third team foul against Archbishop Wood, which is another thing to keep an eye on here. Somebody's going to take a lead. Someone might be in a position where they have to foul. Devin Prep has seven team fouls. Archbishop Wood has three fouls to give until they put Devin Prep in the bonus. Lucas Orchard might have Carson Howard right where he wants him. Carson Howard's doing a really nice job moving his feet, though. One thirty to go. Does Devin Prep look for the last shot here? Boy. No, but a foul is called. Well, it, it might head that direction. Fourth team foul against Archbishop Wood. I don't think Coach Moscow's going to let him play for the last shot because you saw, I mean, they're aggressively attacking the basketball out, way out on the perimeter. There are ways to defray that time, though. Conlon, a good catch. Bayon Mishak got into it. Could have called a foul either way there. That three was halfway down. That's two that Shane Doyle have, has shot, both of which looked like they were in. Oh, it's a timeout called by John Mosco. <laughs> as that one goes swish. I think he was trying to, he knew that Coach Bosco was going to call a timeout. <laughs> kind of like the Mishok technical foul shot. Exactly. Bang. Wow. From the midcourt line. Well, listen, Jaleel Bate is that good. That can be true. That's not a great look. Tied at 50 with a minute 10 to go. That can also be true. I, I get the result-oriented nature of kind of Bethea's thought there. I don't begrudge the timeout one bit. No, absolutely. And the mentality in the huddle right now is next play. Uh, you know, <laughs> we certainly advertise for next play basketball, sure but it, it's a mentality as well. Um, John Mosco right now is like, okay, you hit that one, you're going to hit the next one. Jaleel Bethea in his head's like, okay, I hit that one, I'm going to hit the next one. We're still going to get our bucket right here. Um, so I don't think it's a, it's really a negative in the in the huddle right now. Hey, New Magaretti basketball checking in. We were just talking about those guys. Yeah. They say we want Bob Long in every PCL gym. Well, hey, we want to be there as well. We look forward to seeing you guys, That's not this Friday, but next Friday when you're in Winmore to take on LaSalle. Big, uh, big fans of that program, what Carl Aragale does. Our buddy Andrew Bowman is an assistant there. Ran into another assistant at the Villanova basketball game, home against Xavier last week. 56 seconds left. This is where the chess match really begins. No fouls to give for Devin Prep. Jaleel Bethea off the front rim. Bethea steps into one. Bang! Bang! Timeout. 16-0 run. Archbishop Wood leads by three, and they've held Devin Prep scoreless in seven and a half minutes. Well, it was a three that he hit. But it was second chance points. It's Archbishop Wood ability to play much more aggressively on the inside, take control of this game, is what's gotten the lead. And we talked about it just uh, earlier in the game where your best opportunity for a three is often off of an offensive rebound. You have the entire defense, their heads are turning. They have to get back into the paint. They're running back a little bit or at least adjusting their mentality and you can hit the guy you know, back for another three. Jaleel Bethea, also good on him, misses the pull-up jump shot, doesn't get discouraged, he knows the next one's in. That's, that's why he has a UCLA offer, that's why he has a Syracuse offer, a Notre Dame offer, a Villanova offer. Short-term memory. <laughs> All good athletes have to have it. 41 seconds remain. Now the entire dynamic changes here for Devin Prep. Plenty of time to go get a quick two, right? Archbishop Wood is likely going to be running them off the three-point line. So they're down at the baseline. Yeah. 
Mishak, it's a giveaway. Bea has it again. Bethea wants the ball. Extra one to Maxi. There's the foul. And just the absolute smart play there. Deuce Maxi, right? Yep, the That's sophomore. That's the play, Bruce. No, I mean, smart play by bringing the ball back out. And getting it to your best free throw shooter as well. Just a really, really good end of game execution for this Archbishop Wood team. How about the minutes that Bea is playing as well? Yeah, key. Games are won and lost well at the front end. And Jaleel Bethea hits it. Wow, two possession game now, 32 seconds. I say that because you've heard that so many times, Will, and Bethea steps up and hits it calmly, right? That is either points on the board or a turnover with 32 seconds left. And Jaleel Bethea hits not only the front end, but the second as well. Mishak, he is fouled. Now here's the question, in the act of shooting or on the floor? It's just a 15 foul. I, it looks like they're pointing underneath. It's gonna be on the floor. Well, have a chance here, baseline out of bounds. Can you get a good look? Orchard, I'd say that qualifies, but he couldn't hit it. I think he was a little concerned about Bethea, the shot blocker. Bea is the guy they want to foul. They don't get it, though. Deuce Maxi is fouled with 11 seconds left. Bob, I don't know if I've ever seen yeah. something like this before. This quarter has been 7 minutes and 49 seconds. Archbishop Wood, 18. Devin Prep, 0. Yes. I, I can't think of any situation I've seen like this. Not you've seen, but I was just telling you that the game that I did the other night between Trinity and Bishop McDevitt. Wow. Trinity got up. It was the tie score at the end of the third quarter, and with three minutes in, Trinity had opened up a 20-point lead. Mishak, deep one. Rebound pulled down by Reed. Down to two seconds. He's fouled with 1.5. Archbishop Wood is going to get a key win here at home. They'll get back to 500 in Philadelphia Catholic League play. And it really is going to be one of the most incredible victories I think I've seen in Philadelphia Catholic League play. Now, and that's not an exaggeration. If Jaleel knocks down these two, it'll be a 20 to nothing quarter. That's just... Knocks it down, wow. The final heave. Archbishop Wood, what a win. Backs against the wall, they outscore Devin Prep 20-0 in the final quarter to win the basketball game. Bob's gonna head down, see if he can get some uh, post-game interviews. But gosh, Will, I'll tell you what. I think it all came down to what I said was, I thought was gonna be the key to the game, which was Archbishop Wood being able to take advantage of their physicality and their size on the inside. And they were patient on offense and really worked well. We'll send it down to Bob Long and Jaleel Bethea once uh, the dust settles a little bit. Grab you for a quick one with you and Jaleel, both of you. Can we tell him to move? Okay, guys, Bob Long here on the floor, John Mosco and Jaleel Bethea. Jaleel, we'll start with you. 20 to nothing, you guys outscored Devin Prep in the fourth quarter to come back, win the game, and get back to 500 in the Catholic League play. Tell me how it happened. Look, we was down before the half, so we just like, we start over at 0-0, so we just came out with a whole different mindset, just to play defense, get in their head, and just be the, uh, the more aggressive team, and that's how we pulled out the W. You hit some big shots in the fourth quarter, but what we really noticed up there was your attention to detail on the defensive glass, preventing second chances from Devin Prep. 
when you think about, hey, you got a 13-point deficit in the fourth quarter, is that one of those things that you focus on? No, I really don't worry about the score. I just keep playing through it. It doesn't even matter if we're down by 20, down by 30. You just keep playing. But, like, Moscow, he just tell me to rebound, and then that's what I did. And then I listened to the game plan, and then, like, everything just went, went with the flow. To play in a game like that, to have that opportunity to come back, just take us through the feeling, right? I mean, it's, it's not everybody's going to have that opportunity to lead their team on a comeback win like that. How does that feel in the moment? It feels great, especially when you're at home. Come back at home, that's, that's a great feeling. And then you come back to school the next day, and then everybody talk about it, and then that, that's just a great feeling. Well, congrats on the win. We'll let you celebrate with your teammates. We'll snag your coach for a few minutes. Right, thank Thanks you. for doing this. Jaleel Bethay, uh, now John Mosco. Wow, what a game. You saved the good games for when Bob Long Sports in the house, huh? Yes, we try to play, you know, play exciting ones. Um, he bailed me out. You know, I wanted to get Gus back in. I called the timeout before he got to half court, so the ref made me look bad by calling it late and when he was in motion to shoot it. But, you know, he ended up, I told him you'd rather be more dramatic with the other one, you know, and he really won the game, like you said, rebounding the basketball on the defensive end. Like we missed Milan Dean. Um, he's a great rebounder for us. And Jalil picked up the pace, rebounding the ball. We picked up, we picked up some bad fouls in the, in the first half. I mean, the kids were in foul trouble, but we hung tough and we stayed together. And that's what we weren't doing early in the year because we were young. We ended up outscoring them. We held them to no points in the fourth quarter. So we just kept playing defense and, you know, getting stops and then making, you know, unselfish shots. Deuce made a couple good uh, looks in the fourth quarter, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, we, we didn't begrudge you at all for the timeout. It must be tough to coach that because when Jaleel pulls out of the parking lot tonight to go home, he's still going to be in range. Yeah. And it was the only time he was open probably on that one because they did a great job fronting them, denying them, switching on them. But we ended up, um, you know, still getting them looks. We told him in the first half, in the first half of the season, he was just standing there. And now he's moving, coming off screens, oh, wow. fighting, you know, to get open. He's hard to guard if he's moving. Yeah. You learned some about your team tonight. I know it's been a a quite a slog these first four games. There are no easy nights in the Catholic League. No, no, there isn't. And what I really liked about us tonight was Josh Reed, who hasn't said a word in three years, telling people in the huddle to pay attention. Um, Carson Howard, another one that's been quiet. They're starting to step up to be leaders. And same thing with Jalil. You know, a kid like Esan, he started out on the freshman team. He was on our um, JV team. And tonight, with Milan out, he stepped up. You know, Mike Green had a chance, Deuce got a chance, and they, you know, they played well. We appreciate your time. We'll let you enjoy with your team. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for coming, Bob. Talk to you soon. John Mosco with us, Jaleel Bethea before him. Back to you guys. Great game. What a, what a broadcast and what a response by Archbishop Wood. No, absolutely, Bruce. You, know, you and I were talking about how we, we saw, you were telling me how you saw a team, you know, kind of put up a 20-point spurt like that. I wasn't expecting it in this game. Uh, you know, this Archbishop Wood team, Obviously plays well together, but they had allowed 50 points in the first three quarters. It wasn't like they were putting on a you know a defensive masterclass. Certainly, Josh Reed was playing well. Uh, then in the fourth quarter, it, it's as almost as if they turned another switch. Uh, and zero points in the fourth quarter. I, I don't know if I've if I've seen that at this level before. Uh, not not at this level. I mean, uh, you've seen a game you know games here and there, uh, but not with this level of talent. You know, on both sides being out on the floor. But, you know, Coach alluded to, you know, what I, and the, the key to the game that I saw, you know, coming into here was that inside presence that all of a sudden, I mean, they just caught fire. And I think, you know, maybe the moment got a little bit big for, for Devin Prep. I think, you know, that it kind of flipped a little bit in the fact that maybe they showed a little bit of impatience. But it was actually the Archbishop Wood defense on the inside and moving that defense out to the perimeter and really shutting down the passing lanes and, you know, creating that energy for the entire Archbishop Wood team came from the defensive end as well. Yeah, and, and furthermore, you know, this Devin Prep is going to look back at the film and there were some shots. Cer certainly Shane Doyle had, you know, two threes between the very end of the third quarter and, and a wing three. 
you know, it looked like they were not even halfway down, but like some more like 66% down. I mean, you don't know how those missed. Lucas Orchard had some opportunities, you know, open threes. Uh, they're going to kick themselves for maybe not capitalizing on really good offensive sets that opened up to open threes. You know, it's, it's guys who usually knock them down. And, and Archbishop Wood absolutely capitalized on that. Yeah, Bob Long joins us back up and for post game here. Will and I just kind of marveling at, yeah. uh, you know, uh, John, he uh, really explained exactly how his team got back into this game very eloquently. I think he did. I think he did. He's got a good handle and grasp on his team. He knew how to motivate them at the right moment. Listen, they were playing a state championship caliber team, a team that is a current and defending state champion in Devin Prep, and they decimated them in the fourth quarter, right? I mean, I think Devin Prep's going to take a lot away from this game. Uh, they played an excellent three quarters. They can, you know, they're going to continue to be a tough out in the Catholic League. It is unfortunate that someone has to lose these types of games. It, it really is. And well, I, don't think, I don't think these teams are going to lose many games against teams that aren't in the Catholic League, but when there are games like this in the Catholic League, somebody's got to lose it. Better to lose them in uh, January than in March or April. Yep. But again, think of a two-game, really two-and-a-half game swing, right? I mean, in, in some ways, it, one and three, three and one. If Devin Prep wins the game, it's a it's a versus, mental thing versus not, two and two in the head-to-head -head tiebreaker for Archbishop Wood. So I guess one and a half, but yeah, yeah, it, it it's something else. Anything else, boys? Should we shut her down for the evening? Uh, look, thanks everybody for um, tuning in tonight. I want to thank Bob Long for having me along for the ride here. Love coming down to do uh, Philadelphia Catholic League basketball. Yeah, just I sorry mean, we couldn't get you a better game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it stunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks a lot, Will. Uh, always a highlight for me being able to be on a broadcast with both of you guys. Well, thanks to you, Bruce. Will, thanks for being here, buddy. Thank you for having me. It's always fun to work with you and Bruce, and I uh, appreciate you guys having me. And we'll see you um, in uniform tomorrow as LaSalle takes on Conway Legan. Silent night will be on at about 6.30, so make sure to tune in. Great tradition there at LaSalle. Everybody will dress up and uh, stay silent until the 10th point, in which case all heck will blade break you loose, and we're very excited for that. But for Bruce and Will, my name's Bob Long, saying so long from Archbishop Wood. Boy, it's one of our favorite places to come to, and it's because uh, we get games like this, and staff treats so well. Sue O'Neill, great job. Saw Mike McDonald, head coach of the girls' team, and, of course, John Mosco, head coach of the boys' team was very hospitable to us tonight. Good night, everybody, and we'll see you soon.